In preceding chapters, we have been obliged almost continually to refer to rites, for they constitute the essential element in the transmission of the spiritual influence and attachment to the initiatic chain, so much so that it can be said that without rites initiation is not possible. We must now return to this question in order to clarify certain particularly important points, but it should be understood that here we are not claiming to treat exhaustively of rites in general their purpose, their role, the diverse types into which they are divided, for this is a subject which would demand a complete volume in itself. It is important to note at the outset that the presence of rites is a characteristic common to all traditional institutions of whatever order, exoteric as well as esoteric, taking these terms in their broadest sense as we have already done earlier. This characteristic is a consequence of the non-human element that is essentially employed in such institutions, for it can be said that the purpose of rites is always to put the human being in contact, directly or indirectly, with something that goes beyond his individuality and which belongs to other states of existence. It is obvious, however, that it is not always necessary for the communication so established to be conscious in order to be real for it is most often affected by means of certain subtle modalities of the individual, into which most men today can no longer transfer their centre of consciousness. However this may be, whether the effect is apparent or not, or whether it be immediate or deferred, the right always carries its efficacy in itself, on the condition of course that it be accomplished in conformity with the traditional rules that ensure its validity and outside of which it would only be an empty form and a useless imitation. This inherent efficacy, founded on laws that allow no place for fantasy or for the arbitrary, is common to all rites without exception, and it holds for rites of the exoteric order as well as for the initiatic rites and, among the former, for rites belonging to non-religious traditional forms as well as for religious rites. In other words, the necessary and sufficient condition is that the efficient should have regularly received the power to accomplish the right, and it makes little difference if he does not truly understand its significance, and even if he does not believe in its efficacy, for this cannot prevent the right from being valid if all the prescribed rules have been properly observed.